Are you guys ready for another product review? I am. It's called the Perfect Meatloaf Pan. We did the Perfect Brownie Pan, and if you want a link to that, just wait to the end of the episode. I got a link, I'll take you over there. If you didn't see how that went, we're gonna try the Perfect Meatloaf Pan right now, and it's just, it's really simple. It's a little meatloaf pan, and this little part that comes out, and what this does is it lifts the meat off of the grease, and it's supposed to be a lot better than the regular meatloaf pan. So, we're gonna put them side by side, and we're gonna take a look and see if it's worth it. You guys love these product reviews, so we're gonna keep them coming. Also, I'm gonna be off for two weeks, so don't be uh, surprised if you don't see an episode here, but if you wanna see what I'm doing, I'm taking you with me on Jack on the Go channel, and uh, you can follow me, all, I'm going back to Tennessee. We're going to Memphis, and then we're going to Mississippi, so we got a few places. So if you guys live in those areas, hit me up uh, on Facebook, or if you have my number, call me. <laughs> Well, you don't have a number, but anyway, uh, and then maybe we'll uh, meet up and we'll have some food together and we'll shoot some Jack on the Go episodes together, okay? So here you go. You've got identical amounts of meat, seasoning, and everything. There it is. The only difference is I noticed something on this, and it's okay as long as it doesn't bend, but as I was pressing to form this, watch the sides. See how they kind of, that whole, this whole plate underneath this meat is kind of, kind of flimsy. This thing is starting to bow underneath the meat. So anyway, it's supposed to be like that. And I think it's bent now because the meat is weighing it down. So now it's not. So anyway, we're gonna cook it like this. We're cooking them both at 350 for an hour. Then we're gonna pull them out, let them cool, and we'll take a look at them and see if we see any comparison, any reason to spend money on this instead of paying a couple bucks for this. Okay, here's the first one. I don't know if you can see, you can see there's a lot, of, a lot of grease right in here all around the perimeter. Okay, what I can tell you right now is I'm, obser I'm observing these and I'm not seeing a lot of grease collected around the outside. In fact, there's no grease around the outside of this. This one is like just sitting in a pool of grease right here. Okay, so we're going to take out these loaves and then we're going to examine the grease that comes off this meat. So a lot's going on here in the kitchen, but I want you to see it all. So I've carefully removed the normal meatloaf out of its pan. And then I, I poured off all the grease and fat that it was sitting in. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm doing the math here. Identical quality of meat, 20% fat, 80% meat. Okay. Identical weights everything right so if this much came out of the normal pan the grease came a fat came out of the meat right and this one barely let off any grease whatsoever it tells me that the grease is still left in this food here so even though it keep kept it away from the uh the fat and the oil i gotta tell you i mean it did its job it comes out easy it's really nice non-stick but I'd rather have the fat out of my meat and have a better cut of meat than just retain all the grease and the fat in this piece. So there's your proof right there. Look at, it's almost twice as much grease came out of the meat in the regular pan than it did this pan. Uh, I, would, I would have to say that uh, it did its job. It is a success for what it claims to do, but I still prefer the regular pan and I want this much grease out of my meat. Okay, time for the money shot here. Now we're gonna show you how good it looks. This is the one that was the perfect meatloaf pan. Let's cut that one first. Give me a look on the inside. A little rare. Probably wanna cook that a little bit longer but it looks beautiful. If you don't like a little rare, then give it another 20 minutes. In fact, I'm going to up the time and the directions down below. Don't you worry. But look how beautiful that is. Now, since a lot of the grease didn't come out, it looks like it's very wet. Let's take a look here. Well, this one's just gushing, gushing juice. 
The other one didn't do that. This is really bizarre. These results are not what I expected. Oh, look at that. Even cooked a little better. That's bizarre. Oh, probably because there was less fat in this one. And so it cooked faster. I don't know. I can't even explain it. If you can explain it, write it down below. But basically, uh, they look great. Look at all the seasoning in each piece. It's just, it's just gorgeous. All right, before I try this, I'm gonna give you a chance to win some sauce. Are you ready? All you gotta do is guess what is the Thanksgiving dish that I'm gonna cook this year. I've already done the Halloween. You guys saw that last week. I already have plans on Thanksgiving. I know the dish that I'm gonna make. I want you to guess it, okay? Write it down below. First person to guess it right wins my sauce. I don't care where you live in the world. I'll get it to you. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Delicious. Oh, man. I'm dripping everywhere. Um, there's the links. I promised you. You guys have a good one. I will see you in two weeks on the next Cooking with Jack. It's called the Perfect Brownie Pan. Oh, did I say brownie pan? You know, I, I said this a hundred times. Perfect meatloaf pan. Perfect meatloaf pan. I kept saying it all day. So I get on camera and blah.